Hello. Hope everyone who's watching is well. Uh, this is my last day before I go back to work after an extended break from being sick with COVID. I'm going to go out, because I've got nothing to do, go out for a drive and see if I can get some photos. I'm just going to take my OM-1 with this Olympus 40 to 150 millimeter four point whatever it is. Um, it was the first lens I ever got when I went to Olympus. I bought it used for about 40 bucks. It's surprisingly good for the price, but I just never get to use it. So it'd be fun just to go out, see if I can get any shots. It's in the middle of the day, it's harsh sunlight, but see what I can get just with this lens. If I see any macro, as I'm always on the lookout for macro, I have this Raynox adapter, which just goes on to the end of this lens. You just literally plug it on there, and it turns this lens into a macro lens. And even though might, you might think, well, that's putting glass onto glass, it's not gonna work. You'd be surprised with some of the results you can get from this. It's very sharp. So I totally recommend these Raynox. I don't know what the, the product's name is, but it's Raynox macro filter or something, but yeah. If I get some macro options op opportunities, I'll stick it on. Otherwise, I'll just see what, if we can get some photos with this. So let's go. Right, so I've just stopped off at a rural area on the way to where I'm going, just to see, as I said, it's in the middle of the day. I've seen some subjects, but it's just in bright sunshine, bright sunlight. So I'm basically looking for some shaded areas. Anyway, just drove past quite a cool thing, which I just noticed. So let me just show you. It's, I don't know if I can get some shots. It's kind of not really a good location. It's kind of, um, yeah, it's not in the shade. But look at this. So what we have here is I think we have. So you often have announcements in Japan on tanoi's reminding the local community about events or if someone's missing it will announce it or tells kids to go home and do their homework. It's kind of nice. Look at this cool garden here. So this are uh, traditional Okinawan roofs. You don't see them very often anymore. But there's an old brown style there and then the white style there. That's super cool. Beautiful. Lots of these little narrow roads around here. Ooh, that's the end of the message. Look at that, that's so cool. This old style roofing. So Shisa are very famous in Okinawa, which are these called lion dogs, and you usually get two above the doors, the 
called the entrance of a property. One has a mouth open, one has a mouth closed. And they symbolize the mouth closed, I think, stops bad spirits getting in and the mouth open lets good spirits come in. A lot of houses have them. You have different types, you have like modern ones and old fashioned ones, but I really like it. It's only Okinawa, it's not Japan. It's one of the many differences between Okinawa and Japan. Even though Okinawa is a Japanese island, it was an independent place a hundred years ago, or more than a hundred years ago. So it's got a lot of distinct differences. There's another traditional roof. And there's the sea. Another new style roof. That's two in a small space. That's quite unlike, that's quite unusual. And I think I heard that if you build and you want to get an old style roof, the government will actually supplement you because they want to keep the culture going so you can still have and there's that really cool sheath on the top there I've had a really fun afternoon driving around just a lot of random places some places I haven't been to for years doing some street photography which I don't usually do when I set up this channel it was mainly to do wildlife but you know I didn't really have a set plan there. Anyway, it's been fun. I've been to the beach. I've been to a sort of touristy area also by the beach. I've been to an urban area. And I've really enjoyed using the camera. It's just fun taking pictures. Nothing, obviously it's a really bright sunlight. It's very windy. So it's not great conditions, but it's just fun being out and about taking pictures. Most people who do photography know that it is so good for your mental health, just clearing your head and just any other worries you might have all dissipate when you're out with the camera and you're just thinking about compositions and just enjoying being out in the fresh air, even though it is very hot. And I don't realize it's very hot everywhere at the moment, thinking about those people in Europe who are suffering with the wildfires. Anyway, thoughts on the lens. Of course, I won't know until I get back home and look on the computer. It seems to be very sharp. One thing that does surprise me is how far the minimum focus distance is. When I think of micro four thirds lenses, one of the great things about most of the lenses that I use are the minimum focus distance, how close you can get. So you can take close up shots, almost, you know, semi macro of bugs and things. This lens doesn't do that unfortunately. I can't get as close as I would like and the focus isn't as snappy as it is with other lenses. Now you know my walk around lens usually is the 12 to 42.8 Pro. That's such a great lens. It's got a great minimum focus and it focuses very fast. This lens is slightly different to that but I don't know, we'll see when we get back on the computer, but it's fun using, but being from 40 on 40 to 150 on micro four thirds, it's 80 to 300. So, you know, even if you step back, it's difficult to get everything in the frame. So you've got to think about carefully about what kind of shots you want to take. I think someone who didn't want to spend a lot of money, who did a lot of zoo photography, this lens would be perfect, or flower photography maybe, things that aren't really small you can get you know the focus distance is fine for that I bought a ginger iced tea which I've never had before which was very nice 